What's going on? Big A, the Manky Geek, coming at you with another video. Recently, I saw Captain Marvel, actually, sorry, last week, like when it first came out, saw an early morning screening. And in my review that is up on the channel, although I didn't like it a lot and I thought it was kind of lackluster, I do think the bare bones of it was actually pretty decent, as in they had a decent skeleton to build upon. It's just that they they actually didn't build upon that skeleton at all and instead decided to do things by the numbers which felt very boring um, one of my major problems well I wouldn't say major problem but one of the problems with it um, the emotional kind of weight of the movie depends on Maria and Carol's relationship as friends I don't think the film actually executes that very well uh, for various reasons so most of it most of their friendship is all in all in flashback like all the back in the day stuff of them being really good mates it's it's all in flashback you don't actually get to kind of really see their friendship how it actually was how meaningful it is actually to to any of them the only time there's any meaning to that friendship at all is when maria finally sees carol for the first time in six years and it should have meant so much more, but the fact that we don't see that friendship at the beginning of the movie makes it mean little. Maria's kind of speech to Carol does kind of bring it up uh, a little bit, make it kind of build upon the friendship and actually make it more important. And I did go at that point where, you know, they're in Louisiana in, a, in Maria's house talking, I did go, okay, she's a really good actress. I, I believe it now. Now I'm going to accept it because before... Before she said all that stuff to Carol, I, I wasn't on board at all in any way, shape or form. But I do think there's one thing that could have made that friendship so much more meaningful. And in fact, establish not only them as friends, but also kind of like the main bits of the movie and like the biggest characters in the movie. And that would be a prologue for the film. So if you've seen Captain Marvel, you'll know that all it does, after the amazing Stanley kind of title opening Marvel logo, which set everybody off, you know, in terms of getting quite emotional, there's then the explosion, but it's all kind of in slow motion and it's bits of Carol's memory of the crash. And then next thing you know, she's waking up, run, holler, and we zoom out to see what the city looks like. And then she goes to Jude Law and is like, yeah, let's let's go training. And they have a bit of a fight and that. And it's him preaching to her about controlling her power and stuff like that. It, it's not, from everything we've got in the trailers, it's not, it's not a mystery that she is from Earth. Everything points towards her being from Earth. So we may as well start the movie with, with her actually on Earth. But for some reason, they... They chose not to do that. I don't know as to whether they thought that we would be confused or something like that, but but they chose not to do it. So, yeah, my version of the movie, here's how the prologue would actually work. So it would start off with a briefing, which is headed up by Dr. Lawson. So she's informing everyone about the uh, FTL engine. I guess in my version, it wouldn't be a faster than light engine. It would be some new form of clean energy propulsion or something like that. So she's informing everybody about it at a briefing and they're gonna have the test flight tomorrow in the morning. So this is like the, the day before, the afternoon before. So in that scene, obviously we get Lawson introduced. Lawson would be telling us about the, uh, the engine which in turn would inform the audience about the engine as well. So that's one like plot point that's already like brought up, which becomes later, which becomes more important even later. And then we also get Maria and Carol in the briefing. We find out that Carol will be piloting uh, with Lawson running diagnostics in the, in the back seat or whatever. We find out that Maria will be on comms with the rest of the comms team directly talking to Carol. And then we get that scene afterwards, which we saw in the movie, whereby it's Carol stood by her Mustang, I believe. She's leaning against it and she's talking to Lawson. We'll have that kind of scene in there, but it'll be about 
tomorrow's test flight. And in that scene, we'll be able to see Lawson's relationship, with, well, Carol's relationship to Lawson and how she kind of sees her as uh, kind of like a mother figure in a way, an important person in her life that she looks up to and wants to be like. Um, and we get an exchange between them. And yeah, we get to see as to how important Lawson is to Carol, how inspirational she is to Carol. And then we get Maria coming up and then getting into uh, into Carol's car to go to Maria's house. In this version, Maria does have a husband. We get to the house, we get to see young Monica as well. Maybe they have some dinner or something. And then Carol reads Monica uh, a story before she's going to bed. Um, like I said, we do get to meet Maria's husband also. He is he's also a part of this. We see this kind of like, almost like family unit, I guess, I suppose. And then later, after she's read the story to uh, to Monica, we see Maria and Carol having a little discussion. Carol's quite apprehensive or nervous rather than of the flight and what it means and her like possibly achieving her dreams within reach of like doing something important, something she was always meant to do that she feels that other people would say that she's, she's not meant to do it or isn't capable of. And it's kind of like a friend reassuring another friend that they can do what they're supposed to do, what they've set out to do, and that they have got this, right? And then the next scene after that would then be the next morning, Carol stood in the hangar. It's early morning, you know, the sun's coming up. It's kind of got the orangey feel to it. And she's touching the plane. I don't, is it, I don't even know if you can call it a plane. Is it a shuttle or a plane? No, I'm just going to call it a plane anyway. But she's touching the plane, looking at it, kind of admiring it. And then Lawson comes up and like asks her if she's ready. And she's like, yeah, I'm ready. And then we kind of get a launch sequence. We've got like the comms team. We've got Carol like turning on all the different knobs uh, in the cockpit and all that. And then it goes out onto the runway. You know, it's a build-up of tension. She's quite nervous. And then Carol says to herself, whispers it, kind of like Neo in the Matrix where he whispered, there is no spoon. But she whispers to herself, higher, further, faster. And then she gets the all clear to launch and, uh, and the plane takes off and it's a successful launch. Everyone in the comms room is like clapping or whatever or celebrating. They're up in the air. Lawson's testing like diagnostics and whatnot. Everything's working fine. And then something strange starts to happen. Like comms are reporting that there's something on radar approaching them fast. And then you get pretty much the, the crash sequence. Now the difference in my crash sequence is that you won't be able to see the the Kree ship, Yon Rog's young rog ship you won't be able to see that uh, at all although she's an act, she's like doing uh, evasive maneuvers everything's quite tense she can't see it's on a six but she doesn't know quite where she's trying to dodge whatever shots are coming in we as audience members we can't see the ship either so we we don't know as to who shot her down or as to why but yeah the the, the plane gets hit we have the crash landing as well and then we see the wreckage and kind of Carol's body out cold. You've got Maria and comms like screaming a name. And then we see the comms team like react and like obviously trying to get emergency services out to uh, where the crash site is. And then we fade to black and then we fade in from black and we see Carol on a hospital bed with uh, a blood transfusion, a blue blood transfusion, so it's Cree blood. And then she's watched over by Yon Rog. Now Yon Rog tells her that she was in an accident and that she might have kind of side effects from that. Carol confirms this by saying she doesn't, she doesn't really remember anything. She remembers like bits of things, but she doesn't quite remember. She doesn't recognize his face. She doesn't recognize where she is. And then Yon Rog kind of takes her for a bit of a walk, I guess, uh, around kind of wherever they are. And 
he shows her a window and you can see all of like holler all of like the different buildings and that and she's shocked because she doesn't remember it at all and it's the most fantastical thing she's ever seen and then yon rog kind of tells her there's something a little bit different than what she used to be she's not the same anymore and because she's quite kind of like excited about this whole or really freaked out by this whole kind of like cityscape she's seeing it kind of activates her powers a little bit and yon rog points it out she kind of takes a look at a glowing hand and then he's like we can teach you to control it and then we have the time jump and then we're, we're kind of into the movie at that point i think that prologue would be great just because it does more than one thing and it lets us know as to all the important characters who are linked to Carol. So we get Lawson introduced. So again, she's not introduced as a flashback. She's actually properly introduced. We get to see her as an authority figure, as someone who's smart, intelligent, and has invented the, uh, the drive, the engine, faster than light drive. We get to see Monica and her relationship and as to how they're, they're besties as well and how Carol interacts with Monica, sorry, yeah, no, Maria, Maria, how Carol interacts with Maria and her family and how important it is to Carol and how they're her closest, like, friends and that. Essentially kind of like a surrogate kind of auntie, I guess you could call her. And then we also get Yon Rog, who's someone who does manipulate her. And as audience members would kind of be aware that Carol is being manipulated. But... It, it, we wouldn't we wouldn't know for certain because we hadn't wouldn't have seen a bit of the film whereby Yon Rog uh, actually like shoots Marvel and stuff like that and the explosion we wouldn't see that that would still be a reveal later on in the movie um, but it adds weight to to everything so much more because everyone's kind of given time to say as to who's important it's kind of similar to how in Iron Man although the prologue was Tony Stark getting shrapnel in the chest we go back in time and then we see Rhodey and, and Tony's relationship and how it's Tony being inconsiderate, Rhodey being annoyed and then Tony making up for it with some alcohol and a stripper pole on his plane. Like literally that's what we get to see and I, I wish Captain Marvel kind of had that because then when we see Maria later on it's like oh my god they were besties like she was super close rather than it all being flashbacks I mean the flashbacks were great and everything but you know, flashes of them in the bar doing karaoke and stuff just wasn't enough. So I think this prologue would fix all those problems and establish every major player in in Carol's life. So you got, like I said, you got Lawson, Maria, Yon Rug. Those are kind of like the, the big three. Like Fiori, obviously, he doesn't need to be introduced. He's introduced later when she comes to Earth. And... And yeah, I just think that would a prologue like that would work so much better for this movie and it would be so much more interesting. But I want to know as to what you guys thought of that prologue, whether you think it's any good or if you think it's terrible, that's fair enough. You've got your opinions. Let me know as to what you would do as the prologue for the movie uh, if you had the option to or the chance to or whatever. Like, comment, subscribe. And as always, I'll catch you on the next one.